Hey everyone, Charles Judd here sharing some topics related to the optimization, convergence, and scalability of OSPF. In this video, I'm going to look specifically at LSA throttling and SPF throttling and also the OSPF fast hello mechanism. First, let's talk about some throttling techniques in OSPF, namely LSA throttling and SPF throttling, shortest path first. SPF, of course, refers to the Dijkstra shortest path first algorithm used by OSPF to find the shortest path between two nodes. As you're aware, OSPF is a link state protocol and it uses LSAs to advertise topology changes to other OSPF routers. So if there's a failure or topology change in the network, LSAs are used to allow OSPF to recover and converge alternate paths. This causes OSPF to run the SPF algorithm. So why would we want to throttle these mechanisms? Well, let's say we have an issue where we have a link flapping going up and down continuously in the network. This causes a situation where we're receiving lots of LSAs in a short window of time, each of those triggering SPF calculation, and that's utilizing CPU resources. It's possible that this high CPU usage can cause instability or at the very least we're wasting our CPU resources and we're slowing down the router. And that's what throttling is used to circumvent. These throttling techniques can delay SPF calculations in the case of SPF throttling and can also slow down the frequency at which LSAs are generated in the case of LSA throttling. It's worth noting that although this does make OSPF more efficient, it also increases the convergence time. So that's an important consideration. Let's begin with SPF throttling. I have a very simple two router network here, just a couple of routers connected to each other with an OSPF configuration in place. If I say show IP OSPF neighbor, you're gonna see that I have a full adjacency with the other router. Nothing very complicated here at all. So let's start by going under global configuration mode. We want to go under our OSPF process. So I'll say router OSPF one, and let's use the command timers throttle. And if we look at contextual help, you'll see that we have both LSA and SPF options. So let's start with SPF and let's look at contextual help. Once again, we're going to configure three timer values overall for this, the start timer, the hold timer, and the maximum wait timer. First here is the start timer. This is how long the router will wait to begin SPF calculations after the initial topology change LSA is received. And by default, that's set to 5,000 milliseconds. I'm just gonna set that really low here. As an example, I'll set that to five milliseconds. And if we look at contextual help again, next we have our hold timer. This is how long the router will wait until the next SPF calculation occurs. So this is really where the throttling of SPF calculation happens. I'm gonna set that to 10,000 milliseconds in this case. And so what I'm saying so far is, after we receive a topology change LSA, the router is going to wait five milliseconds, then it's going to perform the SPF calculation. And additionally, I'm saying there should not be another SPF calculation occur until this 10,000 millisecond hold timer expires. So what happens if we have a link flapping and we do receive more LSAs during this 10,000 millisecond window? Well, what's going to happen is our hold timer is going to double. So the hold timer would automatically be set to 20,000 milliseconds in my case. If we receive another LSA before this hold timer expires, then it would jump up to 40,000 milliseconds and so on. So let's look at contextual help and you'll see that we can limit this with our third timer, the maximum wait timer. This is the maximum amount of time the router will wait between two SPF calculations. So in my case, I'll just set that to 90,000 milliseconds. So if we have a link that's flapping and we're receiving multiple LSAs, which continue to double our wait timers, the maximum value that we can reach in this configuration when that timer is being doubled is 90,000 milliseconds. So once we cross the 90,000 millisecond threshold, regardless of what's happening, the next SPF calculation is going to take place. So under normal operating conditions, 
we would receive an LSA. We would start SPF calculation after five milliseconds. We would wait for 10,000 milliseconds. And if we didn't receive another LSA, then the timers would reset and it would continue to operate in this manner. But if we have an issue with flapping, we'll receive that LSA. We'll still wait our five milliseconds to start SPF calculation. Then we start our 10,000 millisecond wait timer. Because of the flapping issue, we're gonna still receive LSAs. It's gonna double the wait timer to 20,000 and 40,000, and eventually we'll reach the maximum wait timer, after which it's going to perform the second SPF calculation. So the question is, what happens to these timers if we resolve the issue? How do those reset? Well, whatever we configure our maximum timer at, which you can see here in this case is 90,000 milliseconds. Whatever we set that to, once double this amount of time has elapsed without an LSA being received, the router is going to reset all of the timers back to their configured values. So in our case, if we pass 180 milliseconds without an LSA being received, the timer is gonna be reset and that wait timer is gonna go all the way back to 10,000 milliseconds as we would expect. So let's go back here and let's take a look at those values. Let's say show IP OSPF pipe to section, including SPF. So this is going to get us a very specific output. You can see our initial SPF schedule delay, which is the start timer of five milliseconds that we configured. We see our minimum hold time value of 10,000 milliseconds. This is our actual hold timer. And then we see, our maximum wait time listed here at 90,000 milliseconds. So let's go under, back under router OSPF1, and let's take a look at LSA throttling. Now this of course allows us to change the frequency of LSA creation if we're having stability issues in the network. This is enabled by default, but we can customize that to our needs. And just like with the SPF timers, we're gonna have three distinct pieces. We have the start interval, the hold interval, and the maximum interval. So let's once again say timers, throttle, and of course we'll see our two options. This time we want to choose LSA, and we'll take a look at our contextual help. So by default, this is set to zero, meaning the first LSA is always sent immediately when there is a topology change. And I'm actually just gonna leave that in place. I'm gonna choose zero. Next, we have our wait timer, and I'm gonna make that 10,000 milliseconds. Just as with SPF, this is the amount of time we wait for the same LSA to be sent again. And then finally, we're gonna see the maximum wait timer, which is the maximum amount of time between identical LSAs. And I'll set that to 45,000 milliseconds. This works just like SPF in the way that the timer doubles. So if we have an event that has created an LSA and it's causing the same LSA to be generated a second time before our 10,000 millisecond hold time expires, then it's going to double that timer. So if we have an event that has created an LSA and it's causing the same LSA to be created a second time before this hold timer expires, the hold timer is gonna be doubled to 20,000 milliseconds. If the LSA is generated a third time, it's gonna double again to 40,000 milliseconds. And it's gonna do that over and over until the maximum wait time is reached. By the way, when I say identical LSAs, LSAs are considered to be the same if they share the same LSA ID number, the same LSA type, and if they are from the same advertising router. So I'm gonna hit enter here. And we also have an additional command we can use. We can say timers LSA arrival, and this is going to allow us to set the minimum interval that must pass before we accept the same LSA. By default, this is set to a value of 1000 milliseconds. Cisco recommends that if we change this value, the value should be configured as less than or equal to the hold interval that we previously configured. So in my case, you can see our previous hold interval of 10,000 milliseconds. So we would wanna set this to a maximum value of 10,000 milliseconds. And what happens is if we have the same LSA arrive sooner than the interval configured here, that LSA is going to be dropped. I'm just gonna set that to the default value of 1,000 milliseconds. 
Let's break out of here and we can verify this with the command show IP OSPF pipe to section including LSA. And you can see our initial delay listed here, our initial LSA throttle delay of zero milliseconds. You can also see our minimum hold time value that we configured 10,000 milliseconds. And of course, our maximum wait timer of 45,000 milliseconds. One more feature I wanna show you is the OSPF fast hello feature. This is a way that we can achieve faster convergence time by setting our hello packet intervals in the sub second range. This is done on a per interface basis and the command it may be a little confusing. It's not super intuitive. So let's go under interface gig zero slash zero and let's say IP OSPF and the option we want to use is dead hyphen interval. Maybe not what you'd expect to see when we're setting a fast hello packet, but if we look at contextual help here, you'll see we can set that to a value in seconds as we normally would, or we can use the keyword minimal to set that to one second. And that's what we wanna do. Now, if we look at contextual help after this, you'll see that we have an additional keyword, hello hyphen multiplier. So if we look at contextual help for that particular item, you'll see that we can use this multiplier value to indicate how many hello packets we want to send per second. And that's going to give us our fast hello sub second range. So here, if I say five, that means we're going to send five hello packets every second. Now, if I hit enter, we're eventually going to see our OSPF adjacency go down because the dead interval must be consistent on the segment whether that is with fast hello packets or any other normal value that we might use. It's also worth noting that the hello multiplier value does not have to be set the same for the entire segment. So let's break out of here and we can verify by saying show IP OSPF interface gig zero slash zero. And you can see here under our timer intervals configured section, by the way, we just saw our adjacency go down because we need to configure the dead timer on the other side as well. But we see our timer intervals configured output here telling us that our hello timer is at 200 milliseconds, or in other words, five hello packets per second. And our dead timer is set to one second, exactly what we'd expect to see. So that's a look at LSA throttling, SPF throttling, and OSPF fast hello packets. I hope you found this content useful and I wanna thank you sincerely for watching.